there is excitement in the air. One of the biggest events of global diplomacy is coming to town. The G20 or Group of 20. India is the president this year. Which means all the meetings and summits will happen here. Dozens of events have already been checked off. But the big one remains. The Heads of State Summit. World leaders will gather in New Delhi in September. We're talking about the most powerful people in the world, the men and women who shape our lives. But before that, let's understand what the G20 is all about, how it was formed, what it does, and what India's presidency means. Time to hit the rewind button. The year is 1999. The Asian financial crisis is in the rearview mirror. But the experience is not forgotten. Countries realize that globalization isn't perfect, that they need more cooperation. Enter the G20. The first meeting was held in Berlin in 1999. It wasn't a heads of state summit though. That came much later. The 1999 meeting was attended by the finance ministers. 20 countries and blocs were in attendance. 20 of the biggest economies at that time. You can see the list here. West Asia has just two members, Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Latin America has three, and Africa just one. There are 19 countries plus one bloc, which is the European Union. Arithmetically, it's a powerful group. The G20 makes up 85% of global GDP, 75% of global trade, 60% of land area, and two-thirds of the world population. At the heart of it, the G20 is an economic grouping. Just look at what their official document says. G20 is the premier forum for international economic cooperation and it plays an important role in shaping and strengthening global architecture and governance on all major international economic issues. Today, the scope has expanded. The G20 now plays a key role in political issues. One example would be the Ukraine war, but more on that later. The G20 is different from other organizations like the United Nations or even alliances like NATO. For starters, it's informal. There's no permanent headquarters or staff. Instead, the presidency rotates. Every member holds the presidency for one year. For that one year, they are in charge of everything. Setting the agenda, running the website, deciding the theme, and of course, hosting the summits. Last year was Indonesia's turn, this year is India's, and next year is Brazil's. That's three developing countries in a row. India's presidency began on December 1st, 2022. It ends on November 30th this year. The theme for India's presidency is this, Vasudeva Kutumbakum, which means one earth, one family, one future. The theme highlights sustainable and responsible choices not just for individuals, but also for governments. India's vision is for a just and equitable world. It calls for navigating crises in a sustainable, holistic, responsible and inclusive manner. The G20 has constantly evolved since 1999. It started off as a finance level meeting, but in 2008, it was upgraded to leaders level. The reason for that, the 2008 financial crisis. Washington DC hosted the first leaders level summit. London hosted the follow-up in 2009. Both those summits set the stage for the G20's evolution. Today, it goes beyond just the 20 members. The host country can invite non-members as guests. India has invited these states. Bangladesh, Egypt and Nigeria are on the list. Plus, world organizations like the UN and WHO always find a spot. The G20's informality is its biggest advantage. There are no rules or votes like the UN, no treaty obligations like the NATO. Unfortunately, that's also its biggest drawback. Disagreements can make the G20 a lame duck. And that's the challenge facing India in September. The Western countries will want strong language against Russia. How will India navigate that? Also, will issues of the Global South be hijacked by the Ukraine war? For India at G20, with great power comes even greater responsibility.